So I was talking to Devin Tracy, AKA Atheism is Unstoppable, formerly on YouTube, now currently on Censor TV. By the way, if you want to support Devin, he's making more videos than ever, then go to censor.tv, use promo code AIU to get yourself 20% off and ensure that your dollars help Devin. By the way, this 20% also works on the annual membership, which is also discounted, meaning that the cost of supporting Devin is only $6.66 per month. Also, if that's not good enough for you, on Patreon, Devin is still up and running and posting videos for just $5 a month. Wow, 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 you can still support Devin. Stop telling me how much you miss him when he's only a cup of coffee amount of money away from being able to be viewed by you guys. And he told me that I should watch this video from the Young Turks about a Breonna Taylor statue being vandalized in Oakland. And this video from the Young Turks, and I need to emphasize this more than anything, was posted on January 3rd, 2021 aka a couple of days ago from the time that i'm recording this video this video was made this year this is really important because the information in this video is all the way back to the lies that initially came out about brianna taylor the lies that have since been refuted disputed debunked and all but trashed in fact the regressive left has moved on from the level of lies that are in this Young Turks video, which is why I'm covering this because it's amazing that again, on January 3rd, 2021, the Young Turks posted this video. And to give you an idea about how unsophisticated and how outdated the lies in this Young Turks video actually are, that again, was posted January 3rd, 2021. In my last video about Breonna Taylor, which I believe was a response to Hunter Avalon, the guy who says he won't debate me because my audience is too small and I was supposedly caught misrepresenting statistical data multiple times. They're all mean towards you. They're all mean towards <laughs> me? Some of them are okay, but that's that's the point. Like, you know. All right, go ahead. Hit me up. I can handle the hate. <laughs> Monolithic Ethos says, Hunter is afraid to debate ac uh, debate actual justice warrior. <laughs> See, I don't know if it's like gonna, it's going to spark uh, drama or something. No, no, no. It's it's fine. Don't don't worry about that. We can go to the next one. <laughs> that's, that is this one. You know what I'll tell you? That's this one dude who has like this like small little following that's made like ten plus videos on me. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah, no, he's like, it's so creepy and annoying. And then and he's also been caught misrepresenting data multiple different times. By the way, my audience is so small that even when you take into account that Hunter Avalon is deleting videos and you subtract that from the negative view count that he has on Social Blade, I actually have gotten more views in the last 30 days than Hunter Avalon. By the way, that's actually proving that somebody is misrepresenting statistical data. Even he, as bad as his videos were, had moved on from the point of analysis that the Young Turks is bringing to the table in this video. He was talking about how the warrant was fraudulent or allegedly fraudulent because the postal inspector said that there were no drugs being mailed to and from Breonna Taylor's home address. Meanwhile, the warrant never alleged that. They were just using the fact that Glover was getting his packages and getting his mail at Taylor's address to establish among all the apartments that Jamarcus Glover was associated with Breonna Taylor's apartment. And the packages that they were worried about that might have contained drugs and or money were actually packages being brought to and from Breonna Taylor's apartment from a pile of rocks, AKA a drop site, by Jamarcus Glover, Breonna Taylor's long-term boyfriend and the drug dealer at the centerpiece of the investigation. But without further ado, let's get into the Young Turks video because this statue has been torn down and it's just more proof of systemic racism against a woman who did absolutely nothing wrong. Police are investigating the disappearance of a Breonna Taylor sculpture uh, that was vandalized two weeks after it was installed in downtown Oakland, but now it's just missing. Um, so the New York Times reports that the sculpture was smashed in several places late last week, drawing widespread condemnation in the community and promoting a police investigation. A plaque with Taylor's name and the phrase say her name was displayed on the front of the statue. I just want to start out by saying that people should not destroy statues of Breonna Taylor. While it is in fact ridiculous that there are statues of Breonna Taylor, especially in a time where we're tearing down statues of founding fathers and other American historical figures, you know, people who actually accomplished things, and then we're going to leave up or put up Breonna Taylor statues, people who were associated with a drug dealer who ended up dying as a consequence of her ex-boyfriend or her other boyfriend's actions and the actions of her current boyfriend, 
that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean it's acceptable to tear down other people's statues, even if they're on public property or private property or whatever. That being said, I will wait for the results of this investigation to see who actually did this because we've seen a number of stories in this country about statues or different types of vandalism that is supposedly being done by racists despite the fact that they're in major left-wing epicenters that turn out to be complete and total hoaxes. This took place in Oakland, California, therefore there's a heightened chance that this could be a hoax. Also, they vandalized the statue and then they stole it. Somehow they were able to do this within a couple of weeks of each other. So I'm very curious to see how exactly this was pulled off when you would think the vandalism of the statue caused more people to be alerted about the statue and to be looking out for more people potentially messing with it. So I'm very interested to see the outcome of this case, but since we don't know, I'm just gonna leave it right there. But it doesn't matter, of course, even in a place like Oakland, you can have people who get offended uh, by a statue honoring Breonna Taylor. I also wanna remind you all that Breonna Taylor um, was shot and killed by cops in Louisville, Kentucky, who conducted a no-knock warrant on the wrong address. Um, and then just started shooting indiscriminately, uh, which of course um, ended up killing uh, Breonna Taylor in her own apartment. Shot and killed by cops in Louisville, Kentucky, who conducted a no-knock warrant on the wrong address. This was posted January 3rd of 2021. I understand people accepting the early misinformation about the Breonna Taylor case at the beginning of the Breonna Taylor case, but this was posted, again, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this in the video, January 3rd of 2021, and Anna Kasparian is saying no knock warrant on the wrong address where the police shot indiscriminately. Needless to say, this is 100% untrue. This is the warrant of Breonna Taylor. On the warrant, you can see Breonna Taylor's name, Breonna Taylor's social security number, Breonna Taylor's address, and a picture of Breonna Taylor's front door. The police did not raid the wrong address. Again, this isn't all the way back in last year, in early 2020, when we didn't know anything about this case. This is almost a full year later in January 3rd of 2021, where Anna is talking about them raiding the wrong address. It was the correct address. As we've talked about multiple times on this channel, the police had 100% cause to raid this address due to Breonna Taylor's association with the drug dealer Jamarcus Glover and their suspicions that either drugs or drug money was being stored at Breonna Taylor's home. Conducted a no-knock warrant. On top of that, the police did knock on Breonna Taylor's door before breaking down the door. They may have been issued a no-knock warrant, However, they decided in the staging area at the time before they raided her home that they were going to knock prior to doing so. And by the way, this is not in dispute. All of the cops say they knock, multiple witnesses in the neighborhood say that they knocked, and Kenneth Walker, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend who was on the inside, said that he and Breonna Taylor woke up due to the fact that they heard loud knocking at the door. We're in bed. It's a loud knock at the door. It's a loud bang at the door. Both of us are not decent. Can't even think of the word right now. You know, we're at home. Mm -hmm. We're in the bed. It's 12 at night. Our day is over. Mm -hmm. So it's a loud bang at the door. She pops up out of sleep and scared her to death. Mm -hmm. Me too. Like, who is that? So it's a loud boom at the door. First thing she said was, who is it? No response. So we like, what the heck? We both get up, start putting on clothes. Another knock at the door. She's like, who is it? Loud at the top of her lungs. No response. So I'm like, what the heck? So then I grab my gun, which is legal. Like I'm licensed to carry everything. I've never even fired my gun outside of a range. I'm scared to death. So she says that there's another knock at the door. She's yelling at the top of her lungs. And I am too at this point. Who is it? No answer, no response, no anything. So we like, what the heck? We both just see what I have on. Grab the nearest thing. These aren't even mine. These hurts. Like, 
So we both are just putting on something to go answer the door and see who's knocking at the door this late at night. In fact, Kenneth Walker, who Anna doesn't even mention in this video, shot one of the cops in the femoral artery. Anna used to call this a warning shot. He was the one in the apartment along with Breonna Taylor when Louisville cops uh, busted into their home in plain clothes with a no knock warrant and uh, immediately started opening fire as soon as Kenneth Walker uh, fired a warning shot. Now, A warning shot that hit the officer in the femoral artery that nearly caused him to die, but Anna called that a warning shot, but here she doesn't even mention it. Also, the police were not firing indiscriminately into the apartment. They were returning fire after an officer was nearly lethally wounded on a legally justified raid with a clean search warrant. The only officer that can even be remotely described to have fired indiscriminately was a third officer who went around the back of the Taylor apartment and has actually been charged with wanton endangerment for firing into another apartment. This officer, by the way, none of the shots that were fired hit Breonna Taylor and was in no way connected to her death. Like, and remember, she, she didn't do anything wrong. It, like, sometimes, or a lot of times, the right wingers will say yes, but he didn't listen to every command of the cop or he said something rude to the cop. So he deserved to be shot in the back seven times. So he's talking about Jacob Blake right there if you weren't following. And I understand why you wouldn't be following because he's totally making up nonsense about the Jacob Blake case. Jacob Blake was not shot in the back seven times for saying something rude to the cop. Again, Jacob Blake showed up at this woman's apartment or this woman's home in violation of a restraining order. Why did he have a restraining order put on him by this woman? Because she accused him of sexually assaulting her while her young son was laying next to her. And after years of abuse at the hands of Jacob Blake, she got up the courage to report him to the police, got a restraining order, and Blake was in violation of that. When confronted by the police about the open felony warrant against him and the violation of the restraining order, Blake fought the police, attacked them, tanked a taser, and then walked with purpose to the car despite getting orders to stop, and he was shot in the back for it. By the way, in the car were children that did not belong to Jacob Blake. The car did not belong to Jacob Blake. Another reason mentioned in the 911 call for why they needed police assistance is because Blake was taking the keys of a car that did not belong to him. That was the car. So Jacob Blake was about to get into a car. By the way, there was a knife in the floorboards or in his hand that was dropped in the floorboards at the time that he was shot, that wasn't his, with at least one child in the car that wasn't his. The police should not let Jacob Blake on a felony warrant after assaulting the cops go in that scenario. Despite what Jenk says about Jacob Blake supposedly just insulting the police officers and hurting their feelings. Totally made up nonsense, insanely inaccurate information. But again, what do you expect from the Young Turks? But with Brianna, no, they killed her in her sleep and she hadn't done anything wrong and she's an upstanding citizen. I cannot emphasize this enough. This video was posted on January 3rd of 2021. Two days before me shooting this video, this was posted by the Young Turks and Jenk is saying Breonna Taylor was killed in her sleep. And just in case you're curious if that was a one-off, if that was a mistake on behalf of Uger, he says it again later in the video. But Breonna Taylor who was murdered in her sleep Let's go vandalize that monument. There's no excuse for this. The information is out there by this point. The Young Turks has actually covered this story in a more accurate way. So somehow over time, TYT is becoming less informed, less truthful, less honest about the Breonna Taylor case, despite the fact that in the past they were still lying about the case, but they at least covered that she was in the hallway. There is no argument whatsoever for why you can make the case that Breonna Taylor was sleeping in the hallway. That makes no sense at all. That's not what Kenneth Walker says. That's not what any of the forensic evidence says. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Jenk just throws it out there. He just vomits it up as if there's any kernel of truth in what he's saying. It's a total lie, a total misrepresentation, total nonsense. But with Brianna, no, they killed her in her sleep and she hadn't done anything wrong and she's an upstanding citizen. So they got nothing to smear her with. Oh, They got nothing to smear Brianna Taylor with? How about a long-term association and relationship with the drug dealer, Jamarcus Glover? How about the fact that Kenneth Walker was also a small-time drug dealer as his phone records show? How about the fact that Brianna Taylor once rented a car from Enterprise, loaned it to Jamarcus Glover, and that car ended up with a dead body in it? 
How about Jamarcus Glover, the drug dealer at the centerpiece of the investigation, being recorded on a jailhouse phone call saying that he's left about eight grand in Breonna Taylor's apartment when he needed to be bailed out, asking somebody to go over to Breonna Taylor's apartment and get the drug money for him. He's been recorded multiple times saying that he stashed drug money in Taylor's apartment. So where your money at? You going to stay there? Yeah, I'm going to stay You want my right. money here? Yeah. Go through the, you know I'm finna go through the cure right now. I'm, I'm not trying to hide nothing from you or nothing, but like, you know I'm finna go through the most about my money. But like, that what? shit was, see what you mean? Like, bro, hey, hey, like, hey, grand. And I still got money. Uh, Bree had eight grand of your money? Yeah. Did she tell you where it was? Oh, but they got nothing to smear with. There's no information on Brianna Taylor. Queen, Queen is the driven snow. It's Bri Bri Brianna Taylor. Trust me, I'm Jake Uger. So they got nothing to smear her with, but they still hate her. Remember, she didn't yeah. do anything. She was the one who was killed. And they're like, yeah, but other people complained about you being murdered. So I hate you. Jake, I don't hate Brianna Taylor, and most of the people on my side of the political spectrum don't hate Brianna Taylor. Most of us view this as a tragic course of events. The cops were justified in raiding this place. Kenneth Walker inside the place was worried about Jamarcus Glover, Brianna Taylor's drug dealer, other boyfriend, breaking in, which is why he fired the shot initially. And that caused a chain of events that led to the death of Taylor. You actually don't care about Brianna Taylor because you don't even care enough to realize that there's new information beyond the initial narrative that you on your own network have covered. Both Anna and Jenk between them with both of their brains can't figure out or even be bothered to remember things that they themselves have said on their own network. And they just go back to the original Brianna Taylor, no knock Warren, wrong address, police shot indiscriminately, even though on their own network, they've disputed that and moved on to other lies. Your backtracking, your insanity is becoming more and more prevalent. As somebody who's actually read through all the documents surrounding the Breonna Taylor case, poured over the warrant, the backlog of the investigation, all the information that's come out with the forensics and all the graphs of how the shots were fired, I'm not going to be lectured to by somebody who's morally grandstanding and can't be bothered enough to get the basic facts of the case right in their video. The fact that this video, by the way, is above water and likes to dislikes just shows you how little people are paying attention to the Young Turks, how passive the audience is in engaging with this content, because this is just blatantly false information. It's not even close to accurate. It's not even the new lies, which I don't know if I've said this 10 million times enough in this video, but let me say it 10 million times more. This was posted on January 3rd, 2021, and I can't stand it. It's making me crazy how insane this video is. But hey, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. They are linked in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the Young Turks going back to step one of the lies about Breonna Taylor. Till next time.